Or my impression is that, that it made my uh, my blood pump. You know, when you see a picture like that, of course, I'm exposed to pictures like this all the time. Uh, UFO craft and occasionally photographs of beings, but something about it seems right about it when I first looked at it. Of course, there was the skepticism that always goes along with it because as a scientist, I'm to rule out photographs that would have some aspect of a hoax. It doesn't seem like it's a hoax. It seems that it, it is what the witness reported. Equally more alien. On the 1st of December 1987, Philip Spencer, a retired police officer, claimed to have had a close encounter with an extraterrestrial being while walking across Ickley Moor in West Yorkshire. Spencer, who had recently moved to the area, was on his way to visit his father-in-law when he noticed a strange, greenish figure with an oversized head and long, thin arms. The figure, standing about four feet tall, appeared to gesture at Spencer, who quickly took a photograph before the creature fled into the fog. Spencer's account did not end with the sighting of the alien. He reported seeing a craft rise from the moor and disappear into the sky, describing his as a whitish saucer-shaped object emitting a loud hum. Interestingly, Spencer experienced a time lapse discovering that he had lost about two hours and that his compass was pointing in the wrong direction. This missing time and the malfunctioning compass added layers of mystery to his story, suggesting a possible abduction scenario. The photograph taken by Spencer became a focal point of the incident. Although it was blurry, it purportedly showed the alien figure he encountered. This image has been analyzed extensively, with some experts asserting that it is genuine and not fake. While skeptics argue that it could be a hoax or a misidentification of a human or a cardboard cutout. Despite the debates, the photograph remains one of the most discussed pieces of evidence in UFO lore. Investigators like Gita Hugh examined Spencer's claims, with Hugh initially skeptical but later convinced of Spencer's sincerity. Philip Spencer's account of the Eclimore alien encounter underwent significant changes over time, particularly after he underwent regressive hypnotherapy. Initially, Spencer's story was straightforward. He saw a strange greenish figure on Ickley Moor, took a photograph and experienced a time lapse along with a malfunctioning compass. However, following a session of regressive hypnosis conducted by Jim Singleton on March 16, 1988, Spencer's narrative expanded dramatically. Under hypnosis, Spencer recalled being abducted by the alien he had photographed. He described being taken aboard a spacecraft where he encountered multiple beings and underwent various examinations. This new account included vivid details of the interior of the craft and the procedures performed on him which were absent from his initial report. According to Spencer, he was given a tour of the craft and shown a film. The film showed apocalyptic imagery including nuclear explosions, famines and floods. Spencer was then shown a second film. He has never revealed the contents of the second film, saying that the aliens who abducted him do not want humanity to know. Following this, Spencer was returned to Ickley Moor, where he then took the famous photograph. He claimed that the alien was actually waving goodbye to him, not telling him to stay away, contradicting his original account. The Eclimore incident generated headlines in the UK at that time and remains one of the country's most famous UFO sightings. Jacob's Photographs the Jacobs photographs were a series of photos taken by R. Jacobs in 2007 that shows a furry primate-like creature appearing after two bear cubs were filmed at an earlier time. These images, taken by a Bushnell trail camera with an infrared flash, were initially intended to capture local wildlife. The photographs show what appears to be a bear cub in the first image, but the subsequent images depict a creature that some believe to be a young Sasquatch. The creature's posture and limb proportions have led to debates about whether it was indeed a bear with mange or an unclassified primate. The Pennsylvania Game Commission initially dismissed the creature as a mangy bear, a conclusion that many found unsatisfactory. Experts in primate anatomy pointed out that the creature's posture, particularly the way it bends down to sniff the ground, is more characteristic of an ape than a bear. This distinction is crucial because bears, even when suffering from mange, do not typically assume such a posture. 
The debate intensified as various experts, including zoo veterinarians, weighed in, suggesting that the creature's limb ratios and overall anatomy were more consistent with a primate. Elephant Humanoid The elephant humanoid is a cryptid reported to inhibit regions of Australia, particularly Narrabeen Lake in New South Wales. The first known sighting of the elephant humanoid occurred at 1.15 p.m. on April 3, 1968. On April 3, 1968, Mabel Walsh was driving along the Wakehurst Parkway near Narrabeen Lake in New South Wales, Australia with her nephew John. It was around 1.15 p.m. when they noticed something unusual standing in the shallow waters of the lake. Mabel described the creature as being about 4 feet tall with dark grey, tough leathery skin similar to that of an elephant. He had small front legs and walked on its hind legs, which were thick and round much like an elephant. This creature's head was particularly striking, resembling that of an anteater, with a rigid trunk that was squared off at the end and stuck out at an angle. Mabel noted that it had small eyes and no noticeable tail or ears. She recalled how the creature quickly exited the water and moved into the brush with a very fast speed. Despite its unusual appearance, it moved with surprising speed and agility. Mabel and her nephew were unable to investigate further as they were in a hurry to get John to the airport. The sighting was significant not only because of the detailed description provided by Mabel, but also because it was one of the earliest recorded encounters with the elephant humanoid. The account was later published on April 6, 1968 edition of the Daily Telegraph, which helped to bring attention to this mysterious creature. Kofu Fangs Humanoids the Kofu Fanged Humanoids incident took place on the evening of February 23, 1975, in Kofu Yamanashi, Japan. It involved two young boys, Masato Kawano and Katsuhiro Yamahata, who reported a close encounter with strange fanged humanoid beings. The boys were roller skating near the Hinode housing estate, where they noticed two glittering orange ruffles in the sky. One of these objects descended and landed in a vineyard, prompting the boys to investigate. As they approached the landed craft, they described it as a doomed silver disc standing approximately 7 feet high and nearly 15 feet in diameter. The craft had strange characters embossed on its metallic surface and emitted an odd crackling or ticking sound. The boys watched in awe as a hatch opened on the side of the craft and a ladder extended to the ground. A bizarre humanoid creature, approximately 4 feet tall with long arms, dark brown wrinkled skin and 2 inch long metal fangs emerged from the ship. These beings wore a reflective silver uniform and communicated in sounds that resembled a tape recorder running backwards. The boys also noticed another similar humanoid inside the craft. The Kofu entity's skin was described as being dark brown and covered in wrinkles so dense that they obscured any noticeable figures, saving three two-inch long metal fangs. One of the humanoids placed his hand on Yamahata's shoulder, patting him twice, which caused him to collapse to the ground, paralyzed. Kawano quickly pulled his friend up and carried him away from the scene. Upon returning home, the now almost hysterical boys immediately informed their mothers about this bizarre close encounter. The boys' curious mothers returned to the site with their sons and also witnessed an orange light pulsating in the vineyard. This light show continued for about 5 minutes before the UFO launched with a burst of light so bright that the eyewitness were compelled to avert their eyes. The authorities of Civil Aviation Bureau of Transportation Ministry claimed that the UFO was nothing more than the light of YS-2 propeller plane, which often flew at an altitude of 1000 meters and was visible to the naked eye. They apparently reserved their comments as to whether or not the aircraft could also assume the form of small pointy-eared fanged humanoids. Alien Bigfoot Alien Bigfoot is a cryptid that is typically sighted shortly after a UFO sighting. The sightings are mainly in Pennsylvania. On the night of July 31st, 1966, a group of four friends were having a vacation at a local beach in Pennsylvania. When they went to leave, their tire was stuck in the mud. One of the boys went to find a tow truck, leaving the other boys and two girls alone. Several hours passed and the friend still wasn't back. Then in the night sky, they saw a figure flying. 
They took a close look and didn't know what it was. A purple flash of light beamed in the sky and the UFO-like figure summoned a bluish purple light to the ground and flew off. Then a policeman showed up, wondering why they were sitting there at the late time it was. They explained that they were stuck and they were waiting for their friend to get back. The officer offered to go take a look, so the other boys went along leaving the two girls alone. Later, they saw something rustling in the bushes. Then a 6 to 8 feet tall figure trudged out and growled at the two. They were very frightened and the beast ran up and attacked their car. Eventually, when the others got back, the girls told their story. Another sighting took place in 1966 in a very southern part of Pennsylvania. A woman was sitting in a chair. Then she heard something on her back porch. She thought a pack of dogs had returned so she got her gun. When she got out, she saw a hairy humanoid about 50 feet away. She took a shot at it but it teleported away. Then her son-in-law came over with his gun. Then about 8 of the creatures appeared and growled at him. He ran away and dropped his flashlight. The sightings were active but now they don't happen too often anymore. The Metal Man of Folkville the Metal Man of Falkville is one of the strangest mysteries to emerge from Alabama. The story begins on the night of October 17, 1973, when Jeff Greenhaw, the young chief of police in Falkville, received a frantic call about a UFO sighting in a field just outside of town. Eager to investigate, Greenhaw drove to the location only to encounter a figure that would change his life forever. This figure, slightly taller than 6 feet, was clad in a reflective material that Greenhaw described as looking like rubbing mercury on nickel. The figure's head and neck appeared to be fused together and its movements were not human-like, resembling the mechanical motions of a robot. Greenhaw managed to take four Polaroid photos of the figure before it began to move away at an incredible speed, bouncing as if it was on springs. Despite reaching speeds of about 35 miles per hour on his patrol car, Greenhaw was unable to catch up to the mysterious entity. The encounter left Greenhaw bewildered and profoundly affected. He faced ridicule and skepticism from the public, leading to a difficult period in his life where he isolated himself from the community. Although a reporter interviewed him and his story was briefly on TV, he faced severe consequences. Within months of sharing his strange encounters, Greenhaw was fired by the town council. His marriage ended and his house was burned down. These events fueled UFO conspiracy theories even more and showed why many witnesses stay quiet about their unusual experiences. The photos were analyzed but couldn't be confirmed as real or fake. They believed it was a fabrication of the Pascagoula case. Though what was interesting about the picture is that in the negatives you could see a spaceship. Greenhaw regrets ever seeing this alien. The Zanfretta UFO Incident The Sanfretta UFO Incident centers around Pierre Fortunato Sanfretta, a night watchman on the small Italian village of Torriglia. On the night of December 6, 1978, while on a routine patrol, Sanfretta reported seeing a large red oval object in the backyard of a villa he was inspecting. The object, which he described as being over 10 meters in diameter, was just the beginning of a series of bizarre events that would unfold over the next few years. According to Sanfretta, he encountered beings that were nearly 3 meters tall, with melted skin, yellow triangular eyes, and clawed feet. These beings, which he later described in more details under hypnosis, were green with wrinkled skin, pointed ears, and mouths that appeared to be made out of iron. Sanfretta claimed that these creatures abducted him and took him aboard their craft, where he was subjected to various examinations. The incident did not end there. Over the next three years, Sanfretta claimed to have been abducted by these beings a total of 11 times. Each encounter added more details to his story, including descriptions of the alien's home planet and their advanced technology. Despite the extraordinary nature of his claims, Sanfretta's story gained significant attention. He was invited to share his experiences on the Italian television show Portobello, and an investigation by the Carabinieri, the Italian military police, found 52 witnesses who also reported seeing the UFO on the night of the initial encounter. Flannel Shirt Sasquatch the term flannel shirt sasquatch denotes a rare subcategory of North American humanoid sightings 
in which the mysterious creature appeared to be wearing human clothes, most consistently a ragged flannel shirt or otherwise animal skins. Sightings of the flannel shirt Sasquatch have been reported sporadically, primarily in the American West during the 1960s and the 1970s. Witnesses have described encounters with a towering hairy figure clad in tattered plaid shirts and sometimes even ragged shorts. One of the earliest and most notable sightings occurred in the 1950s in California, where a young girl reported seeing an 8-foot tall creature wearing a tattered plaid shirt. The creature's growls, she recalled, was unlike anything a human could produce. Similar reports emerged throughout the 1960s and 1970s. Iniwu and Potty Wolo Iniwu and Potty Wolo's description is similar to the Ebu Gogo of Bajawa people's stories, with hairy body and long downward earlobe and long breasts. They are reported to be around 1 meter in height. One unique feature is that they are said to be peak snouted. Superstitious local people thought that the two creatures are supernatural beings able to change their forms to other different forms. Sightings are said to be common in Flores Island but only a few has been documented. Petrus Jamadi, a farmer, said that he has met the creature once. At first, it looked like an ape. A moment later, the creature changed a bit. He said that in silhouette, they are identical, but the latter form has snout-like mouth. The Jack Mysterious team also made an expedition to Flores Island. They are investigating a cave named Liang Party, which means Cave of Demons, that local people said to be the home of Iniwu and Party Wolo. The entrance of the cave is so small that a man can only enter in a prone position, but the chamber inside is larger. The team tried to go deeper in the cave, but some chamber cannot be assessed by humans. When morning breeze came from the direction of the entrance, the team recorded a movement of short humanoid beings behind the rocks. When the team chased it, the thing vanished into one of the unaccessible small holes leading to deeper chambers. Brian Scott Examiner a man named Brian Scott reportedly had encounters with extraterrestrial beings, particularly the so-called Alien Examiner. On March 14, 1971, near Aperture Junction, Arizona, Scott reported being abducted by a 9-foot-tall telepathic alien. This being, which Scott described as an examiner, communicated with him through rapid slurred speech that eventually slowed to perfect English. The examiner assured Scott that he would feel no pain, and indeed, all discomfort vanished as the encounter progressed. Scott was subjected to various sensations, including the feeling of warm and cold fluids running up and down his legs and a numbing light that caused a headache. The examiner then projected holographic images of doomed cities on an alien planet, explaining that this was his home before its destruction by a virus that had mutated and killed his people. The examiner revealed that the creatures Scott saw were not as they appeared, but were wearing a cloak of sorrow as a biological shield against contaminants. As the incident continued, Scott demanded to know more about the examiner's identity. The being eventually revealed himself as Voltar, a human-like figure with long red hair and piercing blue eyes. This revelation added a layer of complexity to Scott's experience, suggesting that the beings he encountered were not only technologically advanced but also capable of profound emotional expression and memory. Aerial School UFO Incident On September 16, 1994, something extraordinary happened at Aerial School in Rua, Zimbabwe. During the morning break, 62 students aged between 6 and 12 reported seeing strange objects in the sky. These objects were described as silver crafts that landed in a field near their school. The children claimed that they saw one or more beings emerge from these crafts. These beings were described as having large eyes and wearing black clothing. Some of the children said that the beings communicated with them telepathically, sending messages about the environment and the importance of taking care of our planet. The sightings at Aerial School occurred at 10 a.m. on September 16, 1994, when pupils were outside on their mid-morning break. The adult facility at the school were inside having a meeting at the time. The entire incident lasted about 15 minutes. When the children returned to class, they told the teachers what they had seen, but were dismissed. 
When they returned home, they told their parents. Many of those parents came to the school the next day to discuss what had happened within the faculty. This incident is often referred to as one of the most remarkable UFO sightings of the 1990s. The children were very consistent in their descriptions and many of them drew pictures of what they saw. These drawings showed similar details which added credibility to their accounts. The event was investigated by several researchers, including Cynthia Hind, a local UFO researcher, and John Mack, a Harvard psychiatrist. They interviewed the children and found their stories to be sincere because apparently most of the children all told the same story. The aerial school UFO incident quickly became one of the most famous UFO cases in Africa. On a June 2021 episode of BBC's Witness History, the event was described as one of the most significant events in UFO history. However, not everyone believed that the aerial school UFO incident was a genuine encounter with extraterrestrial beings. Some skeptics suggest that it could have been a case of mass hysteria where the children influenced each other's perceptions and memories or simply a prank. In the following years, there were more interviews with the alleged witnesses. Per de Garafa the Pear de Garafa, also known as Bottlefoot, is a cryptid reported to live in the Brazilian Amazon. It is described as a human-like ape standing about 5 feet tall. It has long hair, black skin and a distinctive white navel. One of its most unusual features is a horn on its forehead. Instead of a feet, it has large hands and it leaves tracks that look like the base of a bottle pressed into the ground. These tracks are evenly spaced and avoid obstacles. People who claim to have seen the pair de Garafa say that it can stare intensely, almost as if it is trying to hypnotize them. It is also known to roar loudly, which can be quite frightening. Nas Nas the Nasnas is a creature from Arabian folklore. It is described as a monstrous being that is only half human. According to the stories, the Nasnas is a half human being with half a head, half a body, one arm and one leg. Despite its unusual appearance, it is known for its agility and can hop around quickly on its single leg. The Nasnas is said to have the power to kill a person just by touching them, making the person fleshless in mere seconds. The origins of the Nasnas are deeply rooted in Arabian mythology. It is believed that the Nasnas lived on Earth alongside the jinn before humans were created. According to some stories, the Nasnas and jinn caused much destruction and bloodshed which led to their replacement by humans. The Nasnas had also appeared in various cultural references throughout history.